Crack open a tepid Genesee and watch the flying pictures. It's the Rees Company. I'm Steve Rees, the bull of American broadcasting, alongside the great Chris Morganti. How are you, Chris? I'm good. It's good to be back. We've watched a lot of uh, various media on this program. Sure. Made for TV movies. Uh, instructional videos or employee uh, training videos. Yes. Uh, public information films from Britain. Even a couple sitcoms. Sitcoms. All things Ralph Williams. Oh, sure. He's a genre in himself. And last last time, uh, we even took a, lo- a look at uh, one of our old shows. Yeah. 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 We, we even turned the gun on ourselves, if you want to put it that way. Sure. Um, this time, we're going to do something we haven't done. Yes, it's in black and white. <laughs> but it's also a specific kind of film uh, made by the U.S. military. Yeah. You know, I'm a bit of a history buff, Steve. And uh, what's... what. It's more fascinating in history than World War II, uh, whether it's the uh, the Soviets versus the Germans, uh, the British versus the Italians, or Americans versus their greatest enemy, loose women. The way of all is to stay away from women. Yes, that's an actual clip from a War Department training film circa World War II. Uh, tonight we'll be taking a look at four of these uh, short training films, and we won't be reviewing them in depth or anything. We're just going to kind of point a couple things out as we go along. Um, the the first three warn about a, a particular danger of women. Uh, all three of these are very similar, but they're made for different audiences. Um, the first one we'll be looking at is made for officers, specifically Air Force cadets. Um, the these are these are men who are training not just to be officers but also pilots, um, so they could be considered uh, the best and the brightest. You know uh, that old phrase, right, Steve? Right. right. Uh, but as you'll see in this first clip, they may not be too wise in the ways of the world. You worried, Jim? Sure, I'm worried. Plenty worried. When was it? This morning. Boy, could have been just a strain or irritation, but. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Saturday night. If I remember correctly, that was your dream date. I couldn't have got it from her. She wasn't any regular pickup. Well, she was a swell kid I happened to meet at a soda fountain at the Consolidated Bus Terminal. It's the usual place. I mean, if you can't trust a girl you pick up in the bus station, Steve, what's this world coming to? <laughs> yeah, runaways tend to be, drifters yeah. tend to be very trustworthy, no? Sure. They're not a, they're not ever working an angle of some sort. I mean, I picked her up hitchhiking, I figured she'd be fine. <laughs> Nothing usual about it. She wasn't that kind at all. Well, she was really a fine girl, nice family and all that. You met them? Well, they didn't come in till morning. Uh-oh. Bob, it's impossible. She wasn't... Well, don't you see? What kind of a girl was she, Jim? Oh, a sweet kid, really. And she had a nice home, too. And I did see a picture of her family. Father and mother and a kid brother. Kid brother? Yeah. Name's Jack. About 15. Uh Uh-huh. Wants to be a pilot. Yeah. Let's give him a break, huh? Her name's Barbara. 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 Yeah, I had a date with her two weeks ago. Yes, it seems bus station Barbara has been working her way through all 300 plus members of the cadet corps, which frankly isn't a bad strategy if your goal is to marry a pilot, right? Right. And, uh, I mean, if a guy stays with you after you give him gonorrhea, he's probably in for the long haul. So. That's probably like a, like a, that era's version of speed dating. Sure. Yeah. Hanging out by the bus station. Uh, so if you haven't guessed, the subject of these first three films is uh, how soldiers can avoid getting various sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, Steve, uh, just a little historical context here. Uh, apparently, so many man days were lost by the military in World War One. that this was a major concern going into World War II. Uh, they did, they did uh, a lot of clamping down on it, and the problem wasn't nearly as bad in the Second World War. Um, but I think that's mostly because of medicine and not 
the particular habits of the soldiers, I, I guess. Okay, and you don't think these films played a role in lessening <sighs> the threat? Well, let's. Ho- I, ho- I would hope so. Okay. Yeah, I would hope so. But uh, well, most of these guys uh, get treated after their interactions with uh, bus station Barb. Uh, but one guy chooses a different course of action. Let's take a look. He had syphilis, and he knew it. He knew it yesterday when he went up for a routine cross-country flight to Cincinnati Field. He wasn't feeling very well. He'd been taking some medicine and had a bottle of it with him. He was determined not to be a sucker like Johnson. He was determined to graduate on Monday morning. He was too smart to go to a quack for help. He was smart. He could treat himself. And to make sure, he took a lot of them. So this guy decided to treat his condition, his ailment, with uh, some sort of snake oil, which I'm assuming is uh, cocaine wine. <laughs> that That's what I'm going with there. <laughs> right? Which frankly doesn't sound, that also doesn't sound like a bad idea, unless, of course, you're a pilot, and then this could happen. Yeah, did you notice the explosion was closer to us than the point of impact? I did notice that, yeah. yeah. But otherwise, fairly good production values, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I'd say, especially, I guess, for the time. Yeah, I kind of felt like I was watching uh, Flying Tigers with John Wayne, so uh, it wasn't bad. Um, and another historical side note there, Steve, I believe that was the first time in history that a man's cause of death was listed as plane crash, parentheses, cocaine and syphilis related. No. Yeah. Uh, the second film is called Pickup. And now this one is made for the average enlisted man rather than the officers like the first one was. Uh, and it features a man who has some interesting thoughts on women. <laughs> Sorry, the trash a guy runs into every day? Yes. Who talks about women like that? Right? I mean, plus, he works at an army base. How many women is he even running into on a on an average day? Yeah, you would think very few. Yeah. So, this guy, you, you don't feel bad for this guy when he gets whatever he gets, the clap or whatever. Um, and, and the rest of the film shows him how to treat it. But he, he remains kind of a jerk throughout the whole thing. He doesn't really learn any lesson, which I don't, I guess, I guess the point was that people watching learn a lesson, not the main character. Right, but, right. Uh, yeah, so enough of that guy. Let's move on to our third film. Now, I mentioned the different audiences that these were made for. Uh, this film, called Easy to Get, was made for African-American soldiers. Uh, Steve, the army in World War II was still segregated. Um, but it's good to know that the black soldiers, they got the same information that the white soldiers got so that they were able to take care of themselves and stay healthy. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, this film was made in 1947, two years after the war ended. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Separate but unequal. 
I'll say. Jim, can you put that still up for me? Now, uh, this this is uh, a guy named Anderson, and I don't want to spend too much time on him, so I'll just cut right to the chase and tell you that, unfortunately, Anderson got syphilis. And uh, that's surprising because it seemed like he had a foolproof plan to prevent it, as we'll see here. Wasn't out for It made you think she might be clean, Anderson. She was a prostitute. That's it, sir. I figured if being a prostitute was a job, she'd have to keep clean. Well, man. Solid logic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our last film, called Sucker Bait, deals with yet another trap that women can lure you into. Not only are they crawling with disease, they also might be German spies. Ooh. And that's the subject of our last film that we'll take a look at. Let's join the story here with Master Sergeant William, which I think is his first name. Yeah, plenty. And dull. Say, uh, where does a guy find some sport in this town? Why... There's Barney's. Got a band and a floor show if you like it hot. Yeah? Uh, how about Dames? That's Barney's specialty. Across the street about two blocks down. Yeah, now, Chris, I have a question. Sure. Was nobody fighting a war? Well, they're all stateside. This is before they all ship out. Oh, I see. Because yeah. they, they seem to be creating a lot of dead soldiers, but I think they misunderstood the term. Yeah. 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 I, I kind of thought it would be more about warning against the temptations of foreign women, like British and French ladies. But uh, that didn't come up in any of this. Hmm. So, uh, well, anyway, Bill goes to Barney's. So let's continue. <laughs> Certainly took your time. It was just a phone call. It was mine. She's coming over later. I bet it was some guy. I was oh, don't be it. such a drip. Why, you think we were married and I was chasing after men all the time. You do pretty well. What are you looking at that soldier for? I thought I knew him, silly. Oh, nuts. Finish your drink. Let's get out of here. Say, what is this? I'm going to wait for Marge. If you don't like it, you can shove off. You're not sitting in blue. Okay, make a fool out of yourself. Maybe I'll be seeing you one of these days. Not too soon, I hope. Yeah, now that's a conversation we've all seen in a bar. In fact, I've been a part of that conversation way more than I'd like to admit. <laughs> But uh, never did I suspect that it was all a Nazi plot. <laughs> um, we, and neither does Bill as he proceeds to court his new lady friend. You going to be with this long soldier? couple of days, then overseas. Gee, all the nice guys are here. My brother's a transportation clerk on a transport. It's here now. He sails Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning? Well, that's the same time I'm there. What were you going to say? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, right, here's our drinks. Now, Steve, by pointing out or by telling her when he's shipping out and where, that's classified information that he should not be talking about. So that's kind of the point of this whole film is, uh, the, you know, the loose lips sink ship type of thing. Yeah. Um, you never know who you're talking to. Uh, so let's uh, let's continue on to this next clip here. Your fun is over, Sergeant. You're coming with us. Hmm? Oh, but listen, I got a date with a dame. Yeah, I that dame's got a I... date, too. Just a minute, sister. I'm a federal officer. That 
did it. Yeah. Just to be clear, Steve, she's a German spy, and yet they refuse to follow her into the ladies' room. <laughs> I think there was a different code of gentlemanly behavior back then. Um, fortunately, they do catch up with her eventually, as we'll see in this penultimate clip here. It's me, hurry. What's wrong? FBI. Wait. I come here. Stupid. What? We're getting out of here. Uh, I probably should have said trigger warning there. Oh, no. I, I yeah. I mean, that's obviously inappropriate, but... Uh, well, she's a Nazi spy. Well, yeah. But uh, have you ever seen the movie where Ronald Reagan slaps that woman? I haven't. Yeah. You get back to the hotel and stay there. I like it here. Go on, get moving. I said, I like it here. Well, I can change that in a hurry. He was our, he was our president for eight years. But uh, yeah. you can continue. Hold on. Pause but that wasn't footage collected by, say, a current affair, I guess, at the time. It was actually, he was portraying a role. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was in a film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't, like, you know, knock Leslie Stahl about for asking a, an inappropriate question. <laughs> right. But I will say this. Uh, here's how it's different from how it could be portrayed now. He was not playing an abusive character. Like, he was trying to settle her down. He was the she, she was being hysterical. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That, that's what makes it inappropriate in modern times. Okay. Well, of course, we don't agree with any of that. Right. Yeah. We don't. I'm serious. So all's well that ends well. They they catch the Nazi spies, uh, or so you would think. Uh, but this film had other cautionary tales to tell. Uh, you see, even when women aren't spying or spreading the clap, they can still bring about disaster via the bane of all the fairer sex, gossip. It's so ridiculous. They don't tell us a thing. And the lengths they go with these security regulations. You'd think they'd grow up. And Jack's friend Bill, do you know they broke him several ranks? He was transferred in disgrace to another unit. Just for writing some innocent thing under a staff and talking in a restaurant. Really? What if he did? Suppose some spy did overhear it. I ask you, what good would that do to a spy? After all, this is America. Why, a spy couldn't get that information out of the country. How could he? Stop nonsense. They're going too far, if you ask me. We're grown-up Americans, not children. I leave it to you, my man. Now, the rest of the film shows, in fact how the German spies got that information out of the country that they obtained through Bill and uh, a sloppy secretary that we didn't see. But uh, so I suppose that was the reason for showing that scene. But really, it just kind of it hammers home that all of these were uh, I feel like the War Department was very fearful of the influence that women would have on, on soldiers of the time. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted to point out with all of this. I hope we all learned something. I think we did. And can I say one more thing about the Ronald Reagan film you were talking about? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a fact about this. Okay. Do, do you know the name of it? Because I, 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 I don't know the name of it. Uh, right. But uh, I do know that he nailed it in the first take. <laughs> of course. But he still insisted on 36 more <laughs> because he thought he could do it better. <laughs> uh, I can only hope that 
Well, I can hope that's not true, I'll say. The film went way over on its film budget <laughs> for the actual spools of the He was actually of- writing in other scenes. <laughs> Each of the, the same activity. <laughs> So I don't I don't know. So uh anything else anything more you want to say about this? No, I do not. Anything else you want to talk about? I, you know, you just brought up something I heard Oh, Steve McQueen. I heard about yeah, everyone wanted to write that scene in where they'd be slapping Steve McQueen, apparently, all the people that worked with him. No uh he's not in this film. Oh no. The, the, the one on the right? I don't know. No, neither Reagan nor Oh, you brought up a different film. I, I get it. I get it. All right. But yeah, apparently apparently Steve McQueen was not fun to work with. So uh, <laughs> just throwing that in there. So they look forward to the opportunity. So, uh, Chris, what do you say? We head to Barney's? Yeah. All right. In that case, uh, for Chris Morgan Jim Corhan, I'm Steve Reed. Sasuke Baby. Sasuke Wawa. Oh, hang on. Tigers. Eat them raw. We did it, Sam. You get back to the hotel and stay there. I like it here. Go on, get moving. I said, I like it here. Well, I can change that in a hurry.